I, mean, I think storytelling is the most powerful communication tool we have. And it's not only a communication tool, I mean, increasingly it's a leadership development tool. You see more and more leaders concerned and studying storytelling as a way of communicating. And the reason is if they can have a narrative, something that takes something that might be small, but then connect it to a larger audience. So in development, it's not just one person, one country, one program, but it's connected to all of us. And there's a theme around that. It becomes infinitely more powerful. Now, why story specifically? What does story do that other forms of communication don't? So it's, it's, it's something we've been doing for thousands of years. It, it's part of our history and it's part of our identity. You know, it's how we relate to others and how we define ourselves. We do that through story. So identity is one. The second reason is memory. If you, there are, you know, study after study after study shows that story more than anything else is what an audience or a reader but, or a listener retains. So you can have a speech or an op-ed or a blog post or a newspaper article and what people pull out even just moments after finishing is I remember the story. That's what I can connect to because it's relatable. Now, and then finally and perhaps most importantly story compels us to act and, and you know whether it's a vote whether it's supporting a program of some sort, whatever the action is, story compels us to act. Why? Because there's, it's identifiable, right? There's a distinction that people often make between what they call an identifiable victim and a statistical victim. And the studies show you can give people statistic after statistic after statistic, and what that ends up doing is, you know, numbers numb. The statistics become meaningless or they become overwhelming. So I know I can help one person. I know that I can put, help put food on the plate for one family. I can help provide electricity or clean water for one family. But when that's presented to me as there are 10 million people lacking this or 50 million people lacking that, now I feel powerless. But if you can present that information in story that you're helping one and that one is representative of so many more, now I feel like I can have an impact. And that's why it's so critical, particularly with development. First, you have to realize that this storytelling isn't East versus West. It's not something that developed countries do and developing don't. It's not American, European, it's universal. We've been telling stories for thousands of years and not only have we been telling stories for thousands of years, but the elements of those stories have changed. Certainly the methods in which we share them have changed. You know, when you look at social media or you know, other platforms, that has changed. But the elements of what make an effective story are all the same. What are they? Well, first of all, you have a protagonist. You have a person, right? Organizations, and this is something that's often very much a struggle, particularly with big organizations. Organizations aren't protagonists. They're big organizations. People are protagonists. So you really need some, a person, a character, who drives a story. What else? Stories have obstacles. Again, here's something that big organizations, you know, just dread that they have to talk about this, conflict. But it's not interesting to say, you know, this person was hungry, now they have food. This person didn't have clean water, now they do. That's important, but it's not interesting. It doesn't compel people. A good story demands engagement. And the way you demand engagement is by showing people overcoming obstacles. That's what inspires people. So good stories have conflict. Good stories have a resolution. They also have concrete detail. Some people call it a shock of recognition when you read something or you hear something and immediately you have an image in your mind of what they're, they're trying to communicate. And good stories have those details. They give you something that you can see immediately and feel and touch. Right? And then finally, and I think this is um, you know, really critical, good stories often start small and they grow bigger and bigger. So it starts small about one child in one village, but then it becomes representative of more children in more villages. And then it becomes representative of all of us because it's human nature to care about people and want to help them and help people lift their lives and reach their potential. So good stories start small and they get bigger and bigger and bigger.